Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today we're taking a look at the Zod Drift. Before I get into the content, I need to let you know this video is sponsored by Banggood, who sent the Drift out for review. Thanks a lot to Banggood for sending me the, all the equipment they've been sending me lately. It's been awesome. And I hope you guys are using Banggood to source your RC products because they're making an investment to make sure you get a first look at hardware and equipment before you spend your money. And they're not asking me to do anything for them. So they just send the product out. They let me have an honest assessment of it. They're really trying to make that investment so that your decisions can be made easier. Give them a look if you're in the market for this type of equipment. Before I get onto the drift, I wanna start out by talking just a moment about the Dart. So this plane and I have quickly become friends. And I'll tell you guys right now, this plane is a warrior. It's well equipped with a crossfire module. I did a little upgrade on this one. So I, I put a crossfire in there and I put in a little bit of an upgraded VTX system and a lollipop antenna and a CCD camera up front. I'll tell you though, I have a lot of fun with this plane. It flies, it does an auto launch perfectly. It circles home perfectly. It returns to home perfectly. And I can fly this thing for 40 minutes. So this is a warrior of an airplane. When I got an opportunity to take a look at the drift, I was thrilled because they're cousins. These are kindred spirit planes. Let me take it apart real quick and we'll show you what you get. Based on what I know about the Copilot light system, when I did the first review on the Dart, I said maybe this would be a pretty good beginner airplane and I'll stand by that because the Copilot is so good, it really doesn't matter that this is a wing. Once you have the Copilot set up right, this becomes basically an aerial camera and it reminds me a whole lot of the concept of a quad. Think about what goes on with a quad. A quad is far more complex and non-aerodynamic than that, but because the computers in them are so good, it makes quads turn into aerial cameras. My Hubson Zeno Pro, for example, is a brain dead simple device to fly. I push up, it goes up. I push forward, it goes forward. I stop touching it, it hovers. The Dart is much the same way and a lot of that is due to the co-pilot. For that reason, I know the Drift is going to be an excellent first FPV airplane if you're looking to get into this aspect of the hobby. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen. Let's start out by looking at the fuselage. On the starboard side, there's a servo quick connect and a square hole for the spar. The spar egress is right here, and there's a port side servo quick connect right there. On the back of the wing saddle, there's a hole for support tab that's on the rear of the wing. And then notice the little GPS puck up top to hold the GPS unit. And finally, there's a screw hole right there to lock the wings in place. The motor is already installed when you get it, if you get the PMP version, and these are Sunny Sky motors, and I'll tell you, on the Dart 250, they're perfectly well suited to fly on a two-cell, two-bladed prop that comes in the kit, so I don't expect this will be any different. And then on the back, there's a locking ring for the fuselage. I'll talk a little bit about that in just a moment. On the bottom of the plane, there's a little magnetic hatch with an airflow egress right there, which is very clever, and it also doubles as a hole to get your finger in there so you can open it. And then there's access to the elevator servo in case you need to do maintenance, and the ESC is right there. There's also a wood plate. It's possible that's for the co-pilot light. I'm not sure yet. I'll have to read the book, but it's there. If the co-pilot doesn't go there, you might be able to do something cool like a down-facing camera and just cut it right into this foam piece. Also notice on the side, airflow vents. That's one of the things I really like about the Zod product line is that they really think about what's going on. So they've got airflow on the front, airflow on the sides, egress out the back, and it's very well thought out. There are many more expensive airplanes on the market that don't give any consideration to airflow at all. So I applaud the Zod product team for putting airflow right in the airframe so I don't have to worry about it. As far as the condition of the fuselage, everything looks excellent. I don't see any issues on this thing at all. Everything looks clean. There's no divots, no dents. It's perfect. If you're a regular visitor on the channel and you watch the live streams, you may say, hey, you've already done this. And yeah, I did do a first look on the live stream, but because it's a sponsored product, I felt it was warranted to give the video a standalone title so that people could find the material if they were interested in it. Here's a look at the port wing. Notice the spar that goes about 66% the span of the aileron and the same thing with the main spar on the wing. It goes about 70%, maybe 75% almost all the way out there to the tip. I did notice in my first look that there is a little flex out on the tip. I don't know how important that's going to be since I think most of the loading is going to occur underneath the spar, but the dart flies really well, so I'm going to trust that they have this worked out as well. Here are the retaining tabs for locking the wing into the fuselage. This is the one that goes under that front screw. Your square spar tube goes in right there, and then the rear support tab is right there. 
and there is the quick connector for the servo. So those are the three pins that just slide into that quick connector and that's it, no wiring at all. The servos are already installed, the wiring is tucked away nice and neat, and the clevis is on the control horn already. And then one other thing I'll point out is they do use EPP hinges and they're slotted. So EPP is a little different than EPO, it's a little more pliable, so I'm gonna run with this for a little while. On my mini talon, I cut the hinges off right away and hinged them with regular plastic hinges. On this plane, I'm gonna go with this for a little while and see how it holds up. There's a look down the leading edge of the wing, and as you can see, that is straight as an arrow. There is a little bit of washout on the tip, but that's designed in. I think they did that on purpose. I don't think that's warpage, that's, that's designed. Here's the starboard wing, same scenario. The spar covers about 70% of the span of the wing, and then the aileron spar looks like about 66%. It's already glued in, good to go. Here's the bottom side, servo wires are tucked in, servo's got the clevis on the horn already. The screws are there, I see those, and there's another spar along the bottom too. And then the retaining clips to mount the wing in the fuselage, the square spar tube, and the quick connect for the servo. There's a look down the leading edge, and again, it looks very straight to me. I don't see anything there that's concerning at all. And also a little bit of washout at the tip, just a touch, not much, it's very subtle. Here's a look at the tail boom and the vertical stabilizer. Notice no rudder on this plane, so this is a yank and bank plane. The push rod goes right through the center of the tail boom and egresses out the back to connect to the elevator. And the elevator is held on right there on those two retaining clips with a screw right through the bottom. And here's the horizontal stabilizer. Notice they've got a spar going about 70% the span of the stabilizer and they've got two spars on the elevator itself. And it looks like they're connected right into that control horn. It looks like that control horn links to those spars. So it looks like it's very well thought out. And then on the bottom, one simple control horn and one hole. That's all you get, no adjustments on this one. To connect the horizontal stabilizer to the empennage assembly, you just slide it into the slot and there's a screw that goes right through that hole and holds it in place. And then your push rod just simply connects to that horn right there. Real simple construction. There is one thing I do have to point out that I know to be true already because one of our subscribers, Martin, he bought a drift and he found this out. Notice the rings right there, those are keyed. That ring on this tail boom is keyed to the ring on the fuselage, so it doesn't rotate, and that's good. You want it to be like that. And then once you have that keyed in, you take this ring and slide it down, and it becomes a lock ring, and it slides into place and locks that on there. The problem with that is the vertical stabilizer is indexed a degree or two to the starboard. So I'm gonna to have to decouple that locking ring from the support tube, straighten the vertical stabilizer, and then re-glue it. So that's one downside. It looks like they were off in the factory just a little bit. And as I look down the fuselage, man, I can, I can really see it. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to pick that up or not, but it is definitely there. That stabilizer is not parallel with the ground. So that'll need to be fixed. As far as putting the rest of the plane together, it is just brain dead simple. The spar goes in right there. The wing rides on top of the spar and the support tab locks into place under that screw hole. You make sure you get the rear support pin in its spot and you just slide it into place. And those servo pins connect on the quick connector. And then for the port wing, same thing. Just get it on that spar right there, slide it into place. Make sure you hear that click. You drop your screw in. And that's it, the plane's assembled. All that's left to do really is do the co-pilot configuration, wire in the receiver, mount the propeller, stick a battery in it, and it's ready to fly. There, now you can get a better look at what I was talking about with that horizontal stabilizer. You see how it's not parallel with the wing? That's gotta be fixed, that's not right. Other than the indexing issue on the empennage, everything else on the plane goes together very easily. And I already know this is gonna be an easy flyer because it's got a slight amount of dihedral, it's got the aileron controls, the elevator control. I already know about the power system, and this is a sub 250 gram plane as well when it's all, all done. So I know the flight characteristics are gonna be quite a bit like the, the Zod Dart 250 in terms of speed. And it's a slippery airplane on the outside. They did a good job minimizing parasitic drag on the outside of this plane. And because Banggood sent me the full FPV version, I've got the Copilot Lite. And I'll tell you something else, this flight computer is excellent. It is a very, very good beginner flight computer. You have to read the book, you have to follow the instructions. I will be doing a full configuration video on this Copilot now that I've put one in the sky and flown with it for a little while, so I have an idea what to do with it. So I'll do a full configuration video, be on the lookout for that. But in the Copilot box, you get the computer itself, a GPS puck, and a settings board. I have a very high opinion about this flight computer. It seems to do a very good job flying the dart around. 
The return to home has been rock solid. The stabilization has been rock solid. I have nothing to complain about with the Copilot Lite. Also included in the FPV version is the Zod VC400 all-in-one camera unit. Very simple configuration with this guy. One JST connector to your ESC. You configure your power and channel output with a button on the camera, remove the cover, and you're in business. Very easy camera to operate. I flew with this for quite a while on the Dart, and I liked it. The only thing that caused me to change it out was that I like CCD cameras better. So a CCD camera, I think, just gives a more crisp picture and more dynamic range. But this one does what it says it's going to do, and that's what's important. It is a CMOS camera, and it works very well for a CMOS camera. Lots of people fly on CMOS cameras and just love them. As far as the rest of the hardware goes, they give you a three-bladed prop if you want to fly with a three-cell battery. They give you a two-bladed prop if you want to fly with a two-cell battery. They give you a couple of decals and a very tiny little bag of hardware. How many times have you guys heard me say, the more hardware you have in the bag, the longer it's going to take. The less hardware, the faster it goes. This has virtually none. A couple screws, a couple of decals, that's a Teflon skid for the front somewhere, a, de a decal here, and some Velcro. That's about it. Virtually no hardware. This plane goes together very easy. They also give you a nice little decal sheet too. They did include instructions and some brochures on their other products, but I think in the haste of cleaning up my office, I think I threw them away. So I don't have those anymore, but no big deal because I know the instructions are available online. Their CG markers are right there and you can trust their CG markers. I can tell you on the Dart, their CG markers are spot on. And this is a pitch sensitive plane because it's got no tail moment at all. So if you can trust their CG markers there, I'm sure they'll be fine on the drift as well. Hey, before you go, I wanna let you know that a full 60% of the people who watch my videos don't subscribe. It really does matter to small channels to have a subscriber base and for you guys to click on that notification bell and to watch videos when they post because that helps with placement and it helps the channels grow. So Banggood's doing their part, they're putting products out. I'm doing my part by cranking out videos for you. Do your part by hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell. Also, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and a comment. Those things help too. Interactions with video on YouTube really helps with placement. So make sure you do that and you can share the video as well. Check out my affiliate links in the description if you'd like to get a Zod Drift from Banggood for yourself. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Let's take a look at the fuselage. I'm going to zoom in. No, I'm not. Sit closer to your camera. Let's take a look at the fuselage first. Notice at the top there's a little bit of a... Not a little bit of a... Let's start out by taking a look at the fuselage. Let's start out by taking a look at the fuselage. Let's start out by taking a look at the fuselage. Right up top, there's a quick connector for the aileron servo. There's a brace for the rear support on the wing and the spar tube on the front of the wing. You sound like a moron. Let's start out by looking. Let's start out by looking at the, not even in camera. Let's start out by looking at the fuselage. On the side, you'll notice there are quick connectors for the servos on both sides of the airplane. One on the port side, one on the starboard. Let's start out by looking at the fuselage. I'll point out the quick connectors first. On the starboard side, there's one for that servo and one for this servo on the left-hand side. Are these servos? They are servos. Let's start out by looking at the fuselage. I'll point out right away. Let's start out by looking at the fuselage. On the bottom of the plane, there's a little hatch that gives you access to the elevator servo in case you need to maintain that. 